So good morning to all. Uh, I'm welcoming all to the webinar program uh, conducted by QCRIC. First of all, let me congratulate the and uh, thankful to QCRIC Redemix Congate for arranging the series of uh, webinars, especially in the relevant fields of Congate technology. Uh, and they are doing, they getting most experience and the best faculties which are available in the country to make this program very helpful to all the engineers who are working in the field. So today they are coming with one another uh, webinar series with an eminent speaker. So today my responsibility is to introduce the speaker of the day. Dr. Anil Joseph, Managing Director, Geostructurals Private Limited. I don't think any engineer, Dr. Anil Joseph needs an introduction to the civil engineering fraternity of India because he is involved in many of the social, technical, academic activities across the country. And he's a, a, I would like to say, an international figure in the area of uh, civil engineering. But if I'm going to uh, take out all his achievements and uh, services, it will take much of his time for the talk. So I'm, I will give you a brief introduction uh, about uh, Anil Joseph as the situation needs it and as a formality. So Dr. Anil Joseph had done his graduation and post-graduation in civil engineering from NIT Surat, and he did his PhD from NIT Calicut. And he also have an executive MBA from ICAFI University. He is the director of Geostructural Private Limited, a leading foundation and structural consultancy firm based at Cochin. He has provided foundation and stru uh, structural consultancy for more than 2,500 high-rise structures, including many landmark multi-storied buildings in India in his career of almost 28 years. His design of Nippon Toyota showroom at Kaneshiri, Platinum Mall at Marad and Lulu Hayat Hotel and Hello, am I audible? Yes, yes, now it's audible. Sorry, yeah, there's a power failure. I'm very sorry. So his, uh, these structures uh, grab the best concrete structures award uh, given by ICA Kochi in 2012, 2017, and 2018. He's the, also the managing director of Seacons Private Limited, a construction firm specialized in education of Pile Foundation, and also the director of Engineers Diagnostic Center Private Limited, a firm which is specialized in geotechnical and structural retrofitting works. He is the national executive member of Indian Geotechnical Society and is representing India in International Technical Committee TC220 and in Asian Committee, Technical Committee, yes, RTC 14 on smart observation methods. He is also the member of State Committee in Institute of Engineers Civil Division, Executive Member in Member of Institute of Engineers Kochi Local Center, the immediate past president of Association of Structural and Geotechnical Consultants, Kerala, Vice Chairman of Indian Concrete Institute, Kochi Chapter, immediate past state president of Graduate Association of Civil Engineers, the past president of Association of Binding Specialists, Kerala, Honorary Secretary of Indian Geotechnical Society, Kochi Center, Executive Committee Member of Builders Association, Kochi Chapter, Member of Association of Contracting Engineers and Managing Committee Member of Kerala, 
Management Association and Adjunct Faculty of Albertian Institute of Science and Technology, Cochin. Like that, he is very much actively in all the civil engineering areas of uh, civil engineering areas. Then, in addition to that, he is uh, associated with uh, many of the social activities, vice president of regional sports center Kochi, and served as executive committee member for six years. Key player in the uh, infrastructure development of regional sports center and taking lead role in ensuring the rights of members of RSE. Assistant Governor of Rot uh, Rotary District 3201 from Cochin region. He is the Joint Secretary of Cancure Foundations a non-profit foundation by likely man individual from various walks of life and professionals. So like that, he is involved in many of the social activities and he grabbed many awards, like was uh, bestowed with Ms. Mr. Sri Vishweshraya Best Engineering National Award by International Institute of Social and Economic Reforms, Bangalore, then won ICA awards three times. I told you he won. He won ICA Ultra Tech Award for outstanding concrete structure of Kerala three times. He was won ICA award for outstanding concrete structure again. Then he was awarded from Open International University on his patented work on pre-stressing and hollow shell technology in earthquake resistant construction. So like that, he has achieved many works. So I'm not extending, the list is endless. So uh, we have the right person today to uh, talk about value engineering. So with this, I am inviting Dr. Anil Joseph, sir, uh, for his uh, lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Elson, sir, uh, Secretary of the Indian Concrete Institute and a close friend. Indeed, uh, thank you very much for the good words which you have shared. And I would like to thank Qcrete for organizing this seminar. And that's one thing which we gained in this pandemic is that the importance of knowledge sharing and continuing education was able to be imparted to the society in large and engineering fraternity thanks to the efforts by agencies like Qcrete, Indian Concrete Institute, and numerous organizations, Indian Geotechnical Societies, where the importance of continuous learning has come up and people have been sharing a lot of platforms. I will be sharing a, uh, my thoughts on how the value engineering matters and will share a few cases regarding the foundation design. And also, I would like to take you through a few things, how the technology is evolving and what are the modern trends as a uh, engineer who is to what are the modern trends which is happening in the industry, I would also, which I would like to share with the audience. So let me straight away go to the presentation and again, thank you, Creed, for the opportunity you won. I hope the screen is visible. Yes, sir, visible. Thank you. So today, like pointed out, I would like to share the application of value engineering in the foundation design. So it's something because foundation design itself is a challenging top area and how much it impacts the saving of the structures is what I would like to point out. Yeah, if you look at the evolution of construction industry, it starts from the Neolithic age where the stone construction was there, then moved to frame structures, timbers and stones. Then the Egyptian concepts came in where they started doing the pyramids and still a wonder to the world how they constructed all those pyramids at that time. And Egyptians also introduced the ramp to the construction industry. Then came the era of Greek and Roman civilization where the timber trusses came in and crude form of cement also has come into the industry. So this is the Neolithic construction from 10,000 to 2000 BC and sheer mass of the structure was given and stones were used as the shelter for that. Then came the Egyptian construction 
the stability of the structure, use of scaffolding systems, they brought in, and mechanism for vertical growth was improvised to create such landmark structure 4,000 years back. Still, we wonder how they were able to do that. And with so much of precise engineering, a couple of years back, I was attending a conference at Egypt, just in front of the pyramid, which was the venue. And there was a session by my Egypt foundation engineer where he was pointing out that all the load and the calculation, because Egypt is primarily in the Nile area, and wherever the city was there, they had very bad soil. So when they wanted to construct this pyramid, so they moved into the desert area where they had sand. And the reworking on the analysis of the structure was done. And he pointed out that the bearing pressure, if we calculate, was, really, uh, was less than 12 ton per meter square. It was calculated at that time, and the foundation was made accordingly. And if you go in any part of the uh, time of the year, the temperature inside that is at exactly at 20 degrees Celsius. Whether it is uh, 50 degree outside or, uh, or at 3 degree outside, it will be 20 degrees Celsius inside. So that was the technology which was put forward in the construction of pyramid. Then came the Greek and Roman construction, wherein the frame structures were introduced, and they also introduced arches into construction. Now we study as the modern concept, uh, the concept of flat slab construction and column capital. But we, if you look in, the Greek and Romans had that in their construction at the, way back around 2000 BC. Now, if we compare what is there in ancient and modern, so you can see that on the left side, it's the theater of Marcellus, Rome, Italy in 13 BC, and it's a modern construction cubic house complex in Netherlands on the right side. The Pantheon, Rome, Italy, and the dancing building in Prague. The Basilica of Constantine in Germany, which was constructed in 300 AD, and the basket building in Ohio. So look at the resemblance, the modern and the ancient have. This is the St. Catherine's Monastery in Sinai, Peninsula, Egypt, constructed in 565 AD, and the Tbilisi Museum on the opposite side. So ancient period, they have the wood as the major thing, and now we have concrete as the major element and steel as the major element. And it was no gloves, no shoes, no customs, which effort by man. Now the technology has moved in, gloves, protections came in, and helmets came in. There are two things which revolutionized construction industry. And one is that invention of cement, that's, uh, which made a dramatic change in the concept of construction. And second is the invention of lift, where vertical growth has started happening and the building started going up and up. So if you see the tall structures in the world, you can see that over the years it is keeping on increasing. And you can see this, this is the Burj Khalifa at 888 meter, now soon to be overtaken by the Kingdom Tower from Saudi Arabia, which is going to be more than one kilometer tall. So man has always a fascination of growing uh, bigger, doing large things. And that's the concept where the buildings are constructed accordingly. And I know the technology is going up and it's soon in India also, we will see an explosion of high rise structures happening. And wherein the knowledge of concrete technology and value engineering has to play a big role. Why do you adopt a new change? Because technology is constantly evolving and rapidly changing. The landscape of many different industries ranges from increasing efficiency of day-to-day -day operations to manufacturing new and advanced high-tech products. Early ad adapters understand the benefits of embracing new concepts and they look for strategic long-time assets. So if you look in India, I feel that there is a great growth ahead due to the following transitive factors which we have. One is our economic policies, and economic policies is quite positive. Being a democratic country, we want to open up the industry. There is a slowdown happening due to pandemic, but it's a matter of time. Once the vaccine is there, and the industry will be back on track and will be going, and the economy is opening up, uh, and it will definitely go. And India has got a big dividend called the demographic dividend because of our young population. The average age of the age of the population of India is 30 years, whereas the age of the other countries are all in the range of 40s and even in the 50s. So that means in the next, gener next generation which is going to come in, Indian youth, youth is going to make the difference. And if we can channelize their energy, India is going to become the hub center of the world where all the tallest structures is going to come in 
and has to go make a revolution to happen if you see the taller structures you can see that it all happened in america then it slowly moved on and now it came to asia in malaysia it came in then now it's moving into middle east and soon it will be a matter of time when the tall structures started coming up in india so the common comfort people are looking for more comfort as the revenue increases technology is increasing dramatically the climatic condition and the cultural policies so these are the trend setters which is going to make india one of the leading player in the construction industry in the future and for the young civil engineers who are listening i would like to share with you even though this is not part of your academics please start picking up because this is going to make the change which i feel is going to happen and that is if we embrace change then you can move on very fast so building information modeling will be used in large scale application virtual reality and augmented reality will become mainstream robots will take up mundane civil engineering task modular construction is going to come and drones will remain a mainstay and the homework which we are doing right now which is the major reason why our work has work are slow it will change and prefabrication will take a great step forward and the speed of work will improve tremendously so this is the building information modeling beam system which is going to take right from conceptual design programming detailed design analysis documentation fabrication 4d 5d construction construction logistics uh, operation maintenance renovation and even now the technology the demolition everything will be done in beam platform everything can be studied and documented perfectly so it's a 3d model based process that gives architecture engineering and construction professionals insight and tools to more efficiently plan design construct and manage buildings and infrastructure so this is going to be a big boom which is going to happen in the industry so these are the advantages and augmented versus virtual reality is going to happen so augmented means add or enhance something and in augmented reality graphics sound and touch feedback are added into our natural world to create enhanced user experience so there is a small video so that that's the concept which is going to come up soon augmented and virtual reality where we can have the 3d views derived out based on softwares from just from a plan which is being prepared so and robotics robotics is going to happen robots has to play not only in operations which they are going to do in hospitals not only in the manufacture of car now the construction also we will have robotics coming in So this is the first 3D constructor, 3D printed bridge structure. So from the original CAD files and buildings, you will be able to generate uh, 3D building. And recently in IIT Madras, they have come up the first building in India with the 3D printing technology. And soon it's going to make a big boom in the industry. so that is something which you have to be prepared to take on the change and value engineering is one thing which uh, very much depends upon the technology which you are going to import and the disruptive technology which is going to happen so this is the drones now the old system of chain surveying is gone total station has come in and total station also will soon get uh, worn out and the drone system will catch the industry let us see how it works
So you can see that this technology is at reconstruction at precision of 2.8 centimeter, which will improve. And even in the future, we will be able to measure what is the diameter of the bar sitting at about uh, half a kilometer away. And you can precisely understand what is the corrosion level which has happened to the reinforcement. So that sort of technology is catching up soon. So investigation of large or inaccessible site is possible. Topographic survey and other maps, repetitive mapping, infrastructure inspection, ecological investigation. And another thing which is making revolution in the industry is the modular construction, a form of, of site construction in which building components or modules are constructed in a factory and is transported to the site. And it is catching up very soon. So in fact, it has already come to even our small state like Kerala, it is already there where we have done a project called Avitis Hospital in Nanmara in Palakkad, where a 250 bed hospital was completed. Once we reached the third floor, it took only six months time to complete the entire operation and the modular construction technology was used for the construction of that hospital. So it's all coming up, greater flexibility and reuse, less material waste, improved air quality, reduced construction schedule, and these are the other advantages which we have. So form work also making a great change. The conventional system of shuttering and this thing is going, ready-made plants and prefabs is catching up a loss, and the explosive growth in high-rise building, which is needed to the to cater to the huge population we have, this is going to stay on. And there are new technologies which is coming with typical homework with liner, pipe and aluminum former catching up and adjustable tunnel form, adjustable circular tunnel form. So there is no need to construct the wall. The blocks work will go off. The, uh, it will be all concrete wall, which will have much higher strength. As a structural engineer, we really prefer to have this sort of elements where we have much stable structures possible, much high rise possible, and which will be very safe for lateral loading, such as a cyclone or an earthquake. It will be much more stable. And in another three to four years time, that is going to revolutionize the construction industry. So these are the few points which I would like to share before I move on to my presentation, moving on to the foundation. Now, a few more things there. Emerging in concrete technology, where it Yes, since this is connected to Qcrete and Indian Concrete Institute, we thought we will add something before we move to the foundation level, which is not visible outside. So high strength, high performance concrete is catching up the industry. Self-compacting concrete, fiber reinforced concrete, polymer modified concrete, high volume fly ash concrete, and reactive powder concrete and self-healing concrete or bacterial concrete is also catching up. So I will just discuss on self-healing concrete or also known as bio-concrete can be produced by adding bacteria in concrete along with the nursery state to keep it alive for production of calcite to fill crack after precipitation. Let's see a small video of that. So once the crack has come, the building, once the water starts getting in, the building itself can make the repair works. So this bacteria will be formed and it will fill, uh, uh, it will fill the cracks formed and the building will be stable. So that sort of self-healing concrete is also happening in the industry. So the concept is that if you want to improve value, you should know what is the change that's going to happen and you should embark upon the change. So we touched upon the important point like building BIM systems, the change in formwork system which is happening, the uh, high strength concrete, modular construction, uh, the drones which is going to capture the industry. Uh, these are the technologies which is going to disrupt it, this augmented reality and virtual reality which is going to happen. So as young engineers start learning the new events so that we can move into the latest trend. And now coming specific on few case studies of value engineering. And what is value engineering? 
Value engineering is defined as a structured and analytical process that seeks to achieve value for money by providing all necessary functions at the lowest cost, consistent with required levels of quality and performance. So, V is based on a methodology developed by Lawrence Miles, who worked for GE in USA. And value engineering began with a creative team based approach, which allowed the generation of alternatives to the existing solution. So, let us have a solution, but then that's the most important point when we talk about VE is that there can be different other solutions which can be more economical and more efficient. So, we have to think of different options before we zero in on that. On time, on budget, and on value. So, the three concepts is that value discovery, value realization, and value optimization. So, this is the concept which makes that value engineering. The value of a function is defined as the relationship of cost to performance. So value max is performance max by cost min. Using many widely accepted analysis concepts and techniques, is uh, the value engineering is brought into place. Systematic process following job plan, providing the needed function, safety, reliability, efficiency, and the lowest overall cost. So this is the concept, high quality, on-time delivery, delivery, ability and flexibility, and cost reduction. So what are the different procedures involved in that? So we there are three basic procedures which we define in that. The first is called the BLAST, where you identify the problem, collect the relevant information, define different functions. Second is to create, create different alternatives, Critically evaluate the alternatives and third is to refine, develop the best alternatives, implement the alternatives. So these are the basic procedures which is involved when we do go for a value engineering. And today we will be moving on or for a few case studies which we have done in value engineering and on especially focus on the foundation part of that. So these three cases are Lulu Cyber Tower. Prestige Forum Mall and Lulu Grand Hyatt Hotel. So this is the Lulu Cyber Tower to Kakanad Kochi in the project. And how the value engineering was brought in in the project is that it's an IT park for Lulu Group. Is it located in Kakanad? It's, it's a G plus uh, 20 story building. Uh, actually, this building was uh, uh, first started by LND. The phase one was completed by LND. Phase two, they did the piling and they wanted to have a basement and they have kept the cutoff left of pilot 4.5 meter below ground level and pre-stressed flash lab with peripheral beams and column construction was used for the project so the piles were all terminated 4.5 meter from ground level and since there is a problem there so they have thought that they won't go for basement so the designers uh, which was from bangalore at that time decided to go for pile drop foundation as piles customer terminated 4.5 meter from ground level Basement floor was avoided and over the raft area, filling was planned up to ground level in most area and with service tax in remaining area and a nominal grade slab on top of the filling and then to take the structures from above. So this was the position, idea which was made. It was decided to go for uh, retaining walls in the periphery and raising the columns up to ground floor level and compacted render thin filling is to be done. And over the fill, a grade slab was proposed at ground floor level. So this is the approximate uh, numerical components of the structure. The area of one floor is about 7,000 odd square feet, uh, 70,000 odd square feet. And uh, tank area was about 1,400 m square and about 5,500 uh, m square. That is about 55, 60,000 square feet was uh, for refilling up to three meter. So this is the load calculation because when we were called in to have a look into it, we found that we have to have so much of volume so he says it's almost 6000 uh, 5600 into 3 meter about 20000 m cube of material is needed to do the filling which will cause a uh, weight about 29500 tons of material and the ground floor slab is only 2535 ton and live load 2027 ton super resposed load is 1800 ton and total weight was 35989 ton 
and when we were asked in to have a look into the project we had that idea because once you wanted to do the filling it is like uh, putting almost 20000 m cube so many trucks of runner has to be refilled so we came up with the idea of that we will remove the filling and will construct a slab a structure on top of that and whatever be the load which is saving we will put add it on to the superstructure so thickness of structural slab is taken considering thickness of both pt slab and column drop and average thickness of 350 mm so load calculation with structural slab was done and we found that the load is only 11220 ton which is going to happen so if we remove the earth material which is because the problem is that the work was awarded the contractor was on board and already all the things was uh, finalized so we came up with the new idea that let us have that value engineering proposal let us think differently and we found that if we can save that there is a saving of 2000 24768 ton and saving of 55 piles of 1000 mm diameter can be possible and we thought that we will bring in the basement floor for the car parking area so that we get an additional car parking of 177 finally we ended up having 150 car park additional and with the filling is removed and nominal slab above the filling is removed and we put structural slab in place and we were able to come up with the cost of additional spending about a crore of rupees was the pump in the structure and we came up by removing the weight of 35980 ton and ton we were able to add two more floats to the structure so the extra effective area is 29 lakh 9331 was the rental the rental was was running at 4 rupees 40 per square feet so from one floor we have a saving of a rental alone was of 29 lakh and from two floor we have a rental additional income of 58 lakh so by pumping uh, about an one crore additional and changing the concept which was prevailing because we have one solution we speak to that solution the concept of value engineering is that improvise thing differently and come out with a different uh, alternative so that that can be an optimization of the structure so initial cost of construction will be high considering the long run it will be compensated within a very short time two floor and basement can be added by replacing equal in weight of the filling and time saving and sustainability by avoiding the red earth fill additional substantial income in the long run from the additional floors by utilizing them for office space so annual income additional by spending 1 crore was 7 crore rupees and in addition we got 150 extra car parking space so this is the concept that this is a very uh, small change from the initial design by removing the red earth filling which was in the basement when the work was going to have we had a lot of saving one from the environmental perspective a 20000 m cube means almost two hill small hills has to be cut and brought in which was avoided second is that by removing that and coming with the concept we were able to have additional two floors and additional revenue was brought into the system so finally it was executed and completed now let me move to the second case of prestige forum mall wherein these are the which is which is coming up right now the works are going on and it's uh, the mall is almost uh, in the final uh, structural part and the finishing was has to started and the towers are also two twin towers which is also going on so one is the cityscape apartment and another other is the panorama apartment these are the loading diagram so this was the concept so yeah. so this was the master pilot which was proposed so it is a conceptual scheme this was for the uh, mall area and for the concept what the concept he adopted here was that you have pile foundation and you put a raft on top of that and from there you take the columns from the pile raft system and going up the major challenge here was that the area comprises of very soft marine clay up to 16 to 18 meter so this is a common trend when you do a 25 story building or a 30 story building the structural engineer when they look into it's very easy to make a pile raft combination but when we are making a pile raft combination the raft is not going to work when you have a soft layer and in fact it is going to have additional weight on the pile so that it has to be catered and there is no springs which is really going to help you have the pile raft impact so it is preferable not to have this sort of layout so this was the layout which they were having right uh, initial phase when the work was awarded in when we did the value engineering on the project 
So this was the total layout where files were provided at random and a huge raft was provided on top of that. And from there, the walls and vertical members were taken up. So the only concept which we changed was that we changed it into so piles provided under each column and pile cap for that taking care of the load and it's staff to take care of the uplift forces and the other behavior which will also be transferring the load into the pile itself so the initial proposal we they have 330 number of pile whereas by just removing the total raft plus uh, pile combination into individual pile caps and pile and a nominal grade beam we were able to bring down the number of pile to 278 so you can see the cost saving which is happening and the pile cap since the pile cap was huge now it is only the particular column which has to be transferred and the piles were provided accordingly so this was the saving in the uh, pile cap and the total saving you can see that from a uh, cost of 14 crore 95 like 40,090 just by changing this concept and putting the value engineering into use this different alternate option 9 crore 7 like 87,190 was the cost of one tower foundation cost for the one tower and we were able to save 5 crore 87 like 52,900 so a percentage saving of about 39.29 percentage so pile drop system planned was uh, moved out the design was perfect there was no flow in the design but a new concept was just thrown in considering the bad soil prevailing at the situation and the new proposal of individual pile caps under each column connected by grade beam and slave was done and in two towers there was a saving of 11 crore rupees by going for the alternative thinking of value engineering the designs were perfect in the initial phase but the value engineering concept how we can look at different alternatives and come up with a solution which can really impact the overall performance so that was what which was done on this particular projects now moving to my the third uh, case study of the Lulu Grand Hyatt project at Kochi Bolgati, wherein we won the award for the uh, outstanding concrete structural design. Uh, this is the seven-star hotel project in uh, in Kerala. It's in uh, Cochin, and the architect for the project was Jerome Consultants and WATG London was the lead architect and Jerome Consultant Singapore was the person in charge. So structural design was done by Jerome uh, Consultants and we were asked by Lulu Group to have a look into that and how to optimize the saving in cost, uh, whether it is possible or not. So this was the first seven star hotel in Kerala and spent about 8.9 lakh square feet resting on reclaimed land. So this entire thing was dredged and reconstructed so this is the bird's eye view during the progress of the construction you can see that that huge podium this huge podium was one of the major element wherein we put a lot of application in this to bring in the value engineering and these are the convention center halls and this is the hotel building just facing the webinar lake and where the Cochin port is located so this entire area is a dredge land recently made in 10 to 15 years before was only the dredging happened and completed so these are some of the view of the building which is completed and functional right now so the major uh, hurdle here was that so we were asked to have a look into the cost and initial piling cost was at 92 crores so this property is on a lease land and it is only a 30 years lease period so spending the 92 crores on foundation was practically making the fin project financially unviable so they asked us to have a look into the project and we went through uh, some etaps was the software which was used we went through all the load calculation everything the design was perfect was done by jerome singapore so we were not able to find a difference but then one thing which stuck us that this entire podium they have one meter red earth filling happening so these are the service areas below car parking and the kitchen areas below and this entire area they had 1.2 meter filling and the load coming from that filling was really huge so this idea we had a discussion with them and they told that they wanted to have trees and landscaping the landscaping architect was from indonesia so they wanted to have the flexibility and we found out that this is the one which is bringing in too much of dead load into the structure and if we can eliminate or optimize on this one meter soil fill we will we can bring in the cost of number of piling which is needed and the 92 crores can be brought down 
So value engineering measures, we asked the landscape architect to come in. We found out that with 30 centimeter filling, lightweight material uh, with geosynthetics, we can do the landscape. But wherever they wanted the trees and landscaping, we asked them to finalize that. And wherever they need that, we went for 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter by 1.5 meter feet. So that the trees can be planted, the roots can grow, go down. And wherever it was not needed, we went for lightweight filling material. And the entire uh, landscaping drawing was finalized before we moved into the structure aspect. And uh, thereby a lot of load was able to be removed from the structure. And we went for specialized material, brought in material from Indonesia, which had a density ever, which is a very good for this uh, grass to grow in uh, or the trees to grow in. Uh, and But the density is only uh, 800 kg per m cube, whereas they were going for the field, which is 2,200 kg per m cube. So that was one major element which was removed to bring in, uh, to reduce the weight so that we can reduce the weight coming on the foundation so that optimization can be done in the number of pile required and uh, one second aspect what was done is that we went for porotherm block lightweight porotherm block which is a hollow block it's where uh, instead of the solid blocks it was removed and lightweight porotherm block was introduced and we did a uh, sandwiching system in order to make sure that the acoustics is built within the permissible limit and the weight was brought down considerably on the entire block work which was happening and they had huge transfer gutter like the columns in a uh, in a large hotel so ground floors we have large spans varying from 10 to 12 meter grids pattern and as we move up come to the hotel area it will all convert into blade columns so all that transfer gutter was there and transfer gutter was extremely huge transfer gutter which was bringing in a lot of weight and the columns are all blade columns starting from there moving randomly so no most of the columns get terminated there is no direct load transfer and everything has to ha happen from the transfer girder and it was very heavy so we came up with the concept of going for pre-stressing in stages slabs and beams in transfer girder floor in order to bring the size and reduce the cost of uh, reduce the weight in turn will bring in economy on our foundation cost then mezzanine floor they had kept mezzanine floor because they didn't want it water to come in eliminating the slab panels from mezzanine level above transfer room, room was removed and we made sure that the waterproofing system is properly done with 30 years guarantee period it was done and that was removed in and eliminating one slab from non-critical area like parking and raising the slab to higher level sacrificial shuttering is eliminated and there is a single slab was possible and even small small measures like slab thickness reducing by 10 mm and 10 mm reduction is great for all hotel tower typical floor because uh, this small drops makes an ocean. So these are small, small elements which were put in as part of value engineering where the optimization was done and landscape filling in the terrace was removed. Again, the same concept of going for specialized geosynthetics and uh, additional floors uh, with lightweight material was brought in to make the uh, landscape to the minimum possible. And many 150 mm thick walls adopted for supporting the second slabs are eliminated and huge of slab is raised avoiding 150 mm walls first for wall shuttering was saved so all these small small steps was put in the design was remodeled analyzed and finally when we tended the cost of foundation came down to 69 crores and there was 23 crores saving in the foundation so just by applying the concept of value engineering a design which was perfect, the uh, plan by WATG London, uh, where Jerome Singapore was the structural consultants. So the same system, which didn't have a flow at that time, but just by introducing the concepts of value engineering, we were able to bring the cost to uh, 69 crores and the saving of foundation cost of 23 crores was achieved. And we also won the ICI Ultratech Award for the best structural design for the project. So this is the team which was there and so this is what which we would like i would like to stop my presentation with this uh, what comes easy won't last and what last won't come easy and i would th think that we, will, we can have the interactive session after this hello yeah hello yes, sir. 
Anil Joseph, sir. Yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah, one I have question a... from Mr. Uh, yeah. Yeah. One question. We can have from... a more of an interaction because it's a value engineering. So if I keep on talking, so I can bring in more cases also. But I think it's more important. So the, this sort of uh, concepts has to be discussed so that we can all improve and uh, carry home certain points which can be used in the profession and which can bring in out of economy in our listing and keeping the safety in place we can achieve results based out of that so that's the idea which i would like to share with the audience and i think it is more important to have a 45 minutes interaction and 45 minutes talk rather than uh, talking for one hour 20 minutes yes sir Siju, Siju is asking one question. Uh, can the value engineering uh, play in road construction? Can you kindly answer? Yeah, obviously, value engineering, uh, because road construction is a, one beautiful area where you need so much of uh, improvisation and technology can bro be brought in. So mostly what happened previously, I remember in my younger days, uh, my father was in charge of a geotechnical investigation for a bridge construction and after doing the geotechnical investigation they found that that the soil is extremely bad and the direction of the road has to be changed so that was the conclusion from the study now what happened there are so much of technology which is happening the ground improvement has opened up the systems of new system of foundations has come in so now whatever even if the soil is bad there are so much of technology where we can do value engineering and bring it so that the cost can be optimized so definitely for the road construction value engineering uh, is done uh, and value engineering can be applied so now there are systems like pvd drains being used extensively with preloading in order to gain strength for the road then uh, stone columns are used so a uh, lot of systems has come in where for the uh, road construction the value engineering can be brought in there is there is another from Mr. Kumar uh, Ramurthy, uh, I think only for larger projects it is useful. That is what he is thinking. Of. So some light on this. Yeah, it's not a like larger project. It's, it's, it's a relative factor now. Suppose uh, be, be even for smaller project where we can bring in value engineering because there are different number of uh, options available for one problem itself. So that is the concept of value engineering. So if you spend more time, think of different lateral options, like, uh, the, like the porotom block, which we are talking about. So porotom block, if you look at the cost of porotom block compared with the solid block, it is costlier. But it was brought in so that the load of the structure can be reduced and the foundation can be optimized. So that brings in a different perspective to that. And it adds to environmental sustainability, wherein uh, and then the reduce of uh, noise pollutions also can be controlled with the system of concept of going for a porotum block. So the system is that even if it's small project, we can bring in value engineering based on the different, uh, different options which we have to bring in. And that's why the concept of new concept which I talked about initially, because the systems are changing dramatically, we have to change accordingly. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Ramurthy has again another question. Are there special consultants for value engineering? He's asking another yeah, question. Yeah. yeah. So there is a value engineering society in India now, and there is a lot of uh, people who are doing just specialization into value engineering itself. By, and where what they do, it's all uh, documentation of the different case study wherein a different thinking process has been brought in to bring in optimization so this is a new field which is evolving and there is an indian value engineering association which is in place and a lot of uh, sessions are being taken by them to bring in that importance of value engineering into the uh, construction industry specifically actually it was made in the manufacturing industry in ge but from there it moved into different sectors 
and construction industry is now evolving in the concept of value engineering to a great extent. Okay, thank you, sir. I think uh, another question as an extension to your answer, you have just answered, but uh, Mr. Nikhil Pujari is asking another question. How can one have more exposure to value engineering on the field? Yeah, uh, more, uh, so it's, it's that, uh, the, because when I started, I started by introducing BIM, uh, then uh, say uh, BIM, then uh, augmented and virtual reality, uh, then uh, uh, the say new concepts in shuttering, aluminium formwork which is going to take place, lightweight material which is going to catch. So all those uh, drone systems in uh, survey. So all those things are new systems which if we uh, follow the traditional system, which will be costlier. So you can think of the new options and bring in so that the uh, disruptive technology can bring in economy into the project and thereby leading to value engineering into the systems. So that we have to be aware of what is coming new and how it can be brought into our system to make it more economical and sustainable on a long run. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Sudhakar Rao uh, is asking one question. Can we use uh, value engineering in irrigation structures like dams and barrages and such kind of big structures? That's what uh, Mr. Sudhakar Rao is asking. Again, yeah, it, it also has to be looked into because value engineering again in uh, that definitely can play a big role, especially in earthen dams, wherein you need so much of huge quantity. So by improving, by going for chemical systems or by improving the properties of the material or by adding lime or some other ingredients, the strength of the soil can be improved. Thereby, we can optimize the base width of the dams can be a possible solution and irrigation lining system. So there is a lot of geosynthetics we use nowadays in order to have impermeable barrier, thereby reducing the concrete which is needed for the lining. So all those systems which can be used in the irrigation field also by bringing in new technology and bring a, reducing the cost of the current system, which can be optimized and value engineering can be brought into the field of irrigation system also. So case to case, we have to look into and find the right solution to the problem. Uh, another question, Mr. Uh, another question uh, that, uh, sir, it is useful only in refilled and reclaimed area, uh, like this kind of a question means I think is uh, not uh, this is only useful for refilled and reclaimed area. This kind of a, uh, I mean to say, actually, can you please? No, yeah, the concept which uh, whatever case studies which I have pointed out was based on uh, areas and refilled and reclaimed areas were, where they have deep deposit of soft marine place was in the area which I was focusing on for the case studies which was presented wherein the food saving was possible. But even if you look in, to other areas also, if you, if you have a rock area, so you can do the optimization because the rock blasting is a very challenging job. So if you can, you can proportion your structure accordingly and can bring in solutions, thereby preventing the volume of rock blasting, the time can be saved, the environmental sustainability can be obtained, and uh, the uh, value engineering has been can be brought into sites. So there are cases where we optimize and we decide not to go for a particular basement in order to prevent the rock blasting. Uh, because uh, that will end up with on a long uh, delay in the project. Means the delay means what happened? Your revenue starts coming uh, late. So we have to optimize that that different idea. You have to foresee that if we get hit into the rock, that will be a big challenge. So we will uh, plan accordingly and work out solutions so, so that uh, the overall cost will be optimum and the results can be obtained by the concept of value engineering itself. So that also is a concept of value engineering. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. I think uh, uh, at this moment uh, there are not much uh, uh, questions. Uh, we, on behalf of Cupid uh, Academics, uh, concrete. We, we uh, thank you.
we thank you for uh, this beautiful lecture and uh, it was really uh, eye opening uh, kind of informative lecture you have covered uh, from evolution of foundation from the pyramidal uh, era from uh, the stone age era until the modern uh, high rise buildings we are uh, the information that is provided and uh, you have also thrown light on this uh, very very important aspect uh, in the modern engineering uh, um, uh, studies that uh, in any uh, important structure or structure or small structure whatever the structure is uh, value engineering uh, plays a very important role and uh, your uh, live examples what uh, experience uh, you through in this webinar, especially uh, describing about uh, 23 crores of uh, saving in a particular structure is uh, so i'm sure the uh, audience will truly benefit from the lecture and uh, this is a uh, very, very interesting Uh, thank you very much, sir, and we are uh, very thankful to you on the concrete private limited for uh, this enlightening uh, webinar. Uh, and uh, I believe uh, more uh, with you on several Thank you on this Saturday, uh, and uh, they have uh, listened to a uh, wonderful lecture. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It was uh, uh, indeed uh, thankful again, that uh, Mr. Neil Joseph, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All the audience. Thank you.